I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Tong Tong Gong, co founder and COO of Amber Data. Tong Tong, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me, Ashton. You're very welcome. Let's dive into the world of blockchain data. There's so much different data on chain and off chain as well uh, to take and somehow put into information that can be used and hopefully take advantage of to make decisions or uh, to move forward with the kind of projects and, and all different ways we can use this information. Uh, but it really needs to be captured, organized, analyzed, and, and everything else. Uh, and I know that your team is working on some great solutions that can do just that. Uh, so let's kick off our conversation with just a little bit about um, what you and your team are working at at Amber Data and on that front, and then we'll dive into everything blockchain data. Yeah, so Amber Data, we are uh, founded in um, 2017. We actually just celebrated our five year birthday. And okay. it's it's been a long journey, right? In crypto years, uh, that's like dog years. <laughs> it's like <laughs> 50 years, a lot happened. Mm -hmm. So we are a digital asset data infrastructure company. We provide data and analytics and insights for blockchain networks, for um, all the you know, spot and derivative market, and uh, as well as all the DeFi activities. So we provide a single uniformed um, uh data platform for, for financial institutions to do research and back testings and risk management and tax and accounting and compliance, um, all the use cases they need to have clean, trustworthy data. And we're here to provide that. Very cool. And since 2017, there have been a lot of innovations. DeFi itself, NFTs, mm -hmm. never mind all of the other different blockchains that have popped up uh, using different programming languages and different speeds and costs. Uh, I can imagine that uh, Amber Data has sort of been growing along with the industry as new innovations come out, new types of data comes out, all of a sudden that needs to be analyzed and, and added into the pot. Absolutely, absolutely. It's been a, a exciting journey, you know. Thinking back, I did a lot of um, you know retrospective thinking this week as we celebrate our birthday, right? And uh, and when we first started a company, all we wanted to do is bring transparency and and uh, operational telemetry um, into this you know uh, blockchain world, right? If you think about uh, digital asset, there. Are, in general, two different types of assets. One, there are native blockchain network coins, like Ether, like Bitcoin. There are coins that's built on a certain blockchain network protocols, right? And then there's other type of tokens, if you will. They are um, generated based on a smart contract, also built on top of the blockchain network, right? So all the tokens we know today, like NFT, that's a token, right? Some of the ERC-20 tokens. So all of these, it's born and operate and runs on top of blockchain. So without the data supporting it, you wouldn't be able to understand the fundamentals essentially and how to value these coins or tokens. Um, what is the you know hash rates? What is the difficulty? What's issuance? What's the supply? What is the transaction, right? And fast, um, fast moving to today, DeFi is driving a lot of the innovation on chain. And they're all um, decentralized small contract transactions that need to be a, that you need to interpret, index, and aggregate to understand exactly what's happening, right? If you participate in a liquidity pool, what is your impermanent loss? What is the position? How is that? What is other people's position? How is that changing over time? All of this information. It's disjointed today. It's available, but it's disjointed. You need to have someone help you to aggregate and normalize and clean and present and so that you can have that information make decision. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. There's just so many different categories of, uh, of ways that you could use this information. And I, I've seen through Amber Data that you try and categorize it a little bit into the front office uh, the mid office and, and the back office and mm -hmm. first of all i want to focus on the front office sort of where trading and research and you know how can we use this data to make good trading decisions you know and often people think about uh, blockchain data 
one of the first things they think about is if I knew more about Bitcoin mm-hmm. or Ethereum, I could have a better estimate of, of where the price is going to be or you know what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you mentioned there that you're, you're focused on like, institutional clients. Um, is this one of their goals or what around trading is sort of the main goals that your clients are taking away from the information that you're providing through the data? Yeah, we have a lot of institutional uh, front office customers today. And the one thing that I would say separate us from other people that providing data insights in the space is that we're not just an on-chain data company. We're not just a ranking company. We're not just a mock data company. We actually combine all of these data into a single uniform API. We, you know, not only we support 10 different blockchain uh, fundamental data and all the tokens that's based on these blockchains with support those as well. We connect to all the top centralized exchange for spot futures and options. So we have a uh, tick by tick order book events update data goes all the way back in the history and uh, as well as, um, you know, trade data um, and uh, open high low close. And we derive a lot of um, the cross exchange aggregations there as well. So from a front office use case, as you, you know, um, doing research or back testing, um, we give you the information for you to understand um, what exactly happened, right? What the liquidity is, where's the price movements, and is there opportunity to arbitrage across um, the centralized exchanges? Mm-hmm. And how deep is the water book, right? Some of the institutions, they want to dip their toe into um, crypto. They're big firms. Their toe is pretty big. <laughs> so when they dip their toe into this um, you know, crypto trading world, is it really going to do you have liquidity to support those kind of participation, right? So those are the questions that before people start doing things, they need to understand. And we are really the only provider here give you the insights into both worlds. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I love it. And I, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, obviously pricing is something that's at the top of people's mind, but uh, with reward also comes risk. And I'm curious on analyzing data to l- learn more information about the risks associated with the investments and if that is a category that you know, institutions see as a priority. And if so, how are you helping learn more about risks through the data analysis? There's so many different things when it comes to risk analytics. Um, there are so many things that you need to look at. I can give you an example. It's not going to be an exhaustive, um, you know, by any means. For instance, a um, lot of crypto trading today, it's um, based with uh, stable coins, right? USDC um, and uh, USDT and uh, with with a Terra um, issue. And uh, everybody needs to understand, say, hey, I don't understand stable coin. You know, how does the pack be maintained? So you need to have insights, real-time insights and analytics on the price pack variance and as well as um, the supplies and smart contract activities as um, the um, pack being adjusted. Um, how you got to have like real, real-time insights into this you know, information, right? So that's um, for stable coin, that's one of them. And another one of them is liquidity. Um, risk. In crypto, because the liquidity is limited as compared to um, traditional markets, most times you're, you're really trading, you're playing with your counterparties. So be able to have transparency, understanding how the counterparties' move, movements is moving, in, especially in DeFi. Are you 1% in the liquidity pool or are you 80% liquidity pool? Um, those things are very important. So that's something that you need to understand as well. Definitely. And, and, and great perspective on that. And I feel like institutions think about risk a lot more than uh, traditional retail investors. They often have their eyes on the prize. Um, and, and I think it's very important to also look at, at the risk factors as well. Um, and now, as Amber Data continues to grow, not only is there you know, tick by tick on the exchange and, and new people joining, uh, getting new wallets in the blockchain, uh, and also new blockchains coming out, um, how do you focus on where to expand, where to, you know, what categories of data to start collecting mm-hmm. to bring even more value 
to Amber Data and to uh, the clients of uh, your platform? So on the centralized exchange side, we focus on the exchanges with the um, top liquidity, right? And uh, top liquidity and then also reputable as well that they don't list um, so-called, you know, shit coins. <laughs> And um, it's just a, it's a term in crypto that uh, it's kind of a real term in crypto, unfortunately. So, you know, we focus on the, the reputable exchanges and they also need to have good APIs and documentations and, um, you know, stable platform per se, right? Because we um, aggregate the data from the exchange. If the exchange constantly goes down because their infrastructure couldn't support um, the institutional customer, we can't integrate with that. And uh, so um, really based on the liquidity, the reputation, and also institutional customers' demand. And on the blockchain and different DeFi protocols perspective, we really focus on um, the traction. Um, again, um, what's the total value locked? What's the activities and what is the participation? Um, we don't have the bandwidth to uh, support every protocols, every blockchain is out there, right? And uh, it's really focused on, we're laser focused on serving our institution customer and uh, what they care about. And that's what we'll do. Definitely. And speaking of, of that and, you know, avoiding the shit coins and, and finding valuable data, uh, what is the threshold in, in how you determine, you know, which coins or which blockchains to follow? You know, if there's a new blockchain, you know, at certain at a certain point, when Solana and Cosmos started, everything sort of starts at zero. You know, at what point does it become valid enough that Amber Data says, hey, this looks like it's valuable data that we should start adding into our pot? So today we're really focused on some of the DeFi and lending, uh, you know, DEX and lending activities. Um, I would say when it's a soft standards, right? But uh, we'll say if, you have a total value lock around 500 million. That means you have a real traction. And um, then we'll, you know, double click and add the support there. And also based on, again, customer, right? If I, we, we are so fortunate to have the list of customers that we have today. And uh, we have very constant check-ins and touch base with our customer on a bi-weekly basis, right? If, a customer saying, hey, this is protocol is very interesting. We're interested in these. And uh, that will pro get prioritized. Mm -hmm. mm. Good to know. And is there a way with, it, for retail investors or new traders to, to try and take advantage of this information? Or do you provide it solely to institutional clients? Today, we're very institutional focused. Um, and uh, because our product is really an API, um, we don't have uh, retail focused um, chartings and things like that, but that's something we're looking to produce like market intelligence and analytics and, and risk uh, management um, dashboards. But today, most of our um, data is very um, technical. It's mm -hmm. delivered via API, where we have also have like bulk downloads capability for full historical data. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately today, it's mainly on institutional customer. And again, we are working with some of the smartest, uh, you know, people in the industry, uh, in the tri-fi um, space and moving to and the DeFi space and uh, just very grateful for our customer. Yeah. Mm. And speaking of more institutions coming in, uh, and you, your team work it, working mainly with institutional clients, uh, can you give any insight onto the growth of Amber Data and the growth of institutions into cryptocurrency despite you know, the market conditions uh, of 2022 in, in, in the crypto world? Um, yeah, absolutely. It, we didn't stop at all. As a matter of fact, I think bear markets are for builders. Um, you probably heard this one before, but um, we grew from a team of like 10 people last year to now um, over 50. So 5x our entire team. And uh, we, and the difference between the last um, crypto winter, if you will, in 2019 to this one is that I think last time people were still um, talking about the legitimacy of crypto assets, 
right? It's like it's after the ICO uh, bubble, and people say, "Oh, this is still a scam." Crypto's just you know, it's all scamming illicit activities. But this time around with the bear market, I think people are much more. Um, uh, they're generally accepting crypto's here to stay. They're not questioning the legitimacy of the crypto crypto anymore. It's more of what what is stable coin? How do I understand this and mitigate this and not having and to be so next time I will know something like this will happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do I understand this better, right? And uh, and if you you know talk about the three arrow um, you know problem, it's it's our liquidity, it's our uh, risk management issue. So then it's just like the institution, it's now asking questions about, okay, all the issues that caused this time the crash, it's things that TriFi firms has been dealing with <laughs> for as long as traditional finance is being around, right? At risk management. And every time you have a peg, something's going to challenge it. You know, those things are not strangers for them. You need data, you need access to tooling, you need platforms to help you to manage risk. Financial markets is all about managing risk, mm -hmm. right? So I think this time around, the demand from our customer or prospects is even higher because they realize, man, this is a great opportunity. This is a lot of return for the crypto, but also there's a lot of risk associated with it, as it should be. And how do we understand this better and operate better with better insights? Mm. Great way to top it off, Tong Tong. Thank you for that. And for the viewers and institutions and, and companies that are interested in learning more about uh, data analysis and Amber data, what is the best way for them to learn more? Um, come to our website, amberdata.io. And uh, we have a lot of resources. We have a, a few eBooks you can download and to understand the basic of digital assets and the basic of DeFi. Uh, we just released a DeFi primer eBook um, that's very informational. Um, request for a demo. Um, talk to us, and uh, we'll be uh, happy to you know show you what we have. Sounds great. Thank you so much for your insights into blockchain data. All the best with the growth of institutional clients and collecting more valuable data to make important decisions in blockchain. Uh, all the best to your team moving forward and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashton.